When evaluating functions and being able to read function notation, it's extremely important that you pay attention to the name of the function that's being given to you. So we've got three different functions named up at the top here that have been given to us, and now we're just going to do some calculations. So you'll notice that the first example tells us to go to the function g. So I'm going to go to the function g, and everywhere I see an x, notice that it's inside the parentheses, I'm going to plug negative 3 in. So if I take a look at this, I'm just going to go ahead and start writing the function. And everywhere I see an x, I'm going to substitute in a negative 3. So there's the x. Pull it out. Put a negative 3 in its place. I do like using parentheses when substituting things in, just in case. Clean this up. It's going to give me the absolute value of 7. Well, remember the absolute value means distance from 0. And 7 is exactly 7 units away from 0. And if I add the two together, I'm going to get 9. So I know that my final answer is that g of negative 3. So when I go to function g and I plug negative 3 in for x, I'm going to get 9 out for y. So the same thing with f of x. Now, on number 2, it's telling you to go to the f of x notation. So I do the exact same thing. I start writing the f function. Notice that there's an 18 in the parentheses. So everywhere I see an x, I'm going to plug in an 18. I'm going to multiply these straight across. It's going to give me 36 over 3, then bring down the plus 5. Well, 36 over 3 can be simplified. And then just go ahead and combine like terms. Make sure that you bring down the notation, though. So this is going to be f of 18. So when you go to the f function and you plug in 18 for x, you get 17 for y. Okay, the third one, same idea. Notice that it's still inside the parentheses. Go to the h function. So make sure that you pay attention to which function you're supposed to be dealing with. And start writing down the h function, and wherever you see an x, you're going to plug in 20. Again, using parentheses when substituting in here, I think it just makes it a little bit easier. If I multiply, and then subtract, and without a calculator, I'm fairly confident that that's really the best that I can do. Now example number four and number five are written a little bit differently. Notice that we're trying to find x this time when we know what f of x is equal to. So I think I'm just going to write down the f of x function immediately underneath this one. And then try to remind you of the idea of substitution that we have been doing. It's just going to be doing, doing this just a little bit differently though. So if I bring down my f of x notation, notice that each of these is equal to f of x. So I would like to get rid of the f of x's and actually set those two equal. So I'm just going to bring this guy down. Now I'm solving for x this time. So I'm going to go ahead and now and just treat this like I would a regular equation. So draw my line. Minus my 5 from each side. Again, trying to get my x's by themselves which it's pretty close. The x is isolated. I just need to move a couple things away from it. Combine like terms. Multiply by the reciprocal. 2's cancel. 3's cancel. And then if I multiply straight across. Again, this can't be simplified. If it could, I would. So what I'm finding here when I write this answer is I would say that f of my x value that I just found is equal to the y value that was given to me in the first place. And I was told that it was negative 2. So I found the x. I do the same thing with question number 5. So I'll do the same thing. Write down what f of x is equal to underneath it. Since they're both equal to f of x, let's go ahead and bring this down and set it equal. Follow the exact same procedure. Still multiply by the reciprocal. 2's cancel, 3's cancel, and multiply straight across. Again, can't be simplified, so I leave it as is.